Um, okay, so please uh, join me in welcoming Professor Harish Valeria. Okay. Thank you, Professor Sethi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so it's a great pleasure to be here uh, among you with all of us having the same aim to basically uh, promote the environmental education uh, in undergraduate studies and basically uh, kind of bring the conventional as well as the emerging topics in environmental science and engineering to basically the undergraduate students so that they first get aware about the issues existing and what are the ways that we can tackle them at the same time can get also motivated to pursue further studies in environmental science and engineering. Uh, I think you had a great time in the last several days about different modules which were covered. Um, I will take the one small section on that which is on water pollution. And this will be, as Professor Sethi mentioned, uh, a more interactive session where I will basically give some pointers and then would like to also encourage you to participate in this to basically what you would like you know, also there or especially there that needs to be delivered to our students uh, who are basically pursuing the undergraduate studies. To start with, I am an assistant professor in Center for Environmental Science and Engineering. I joined about 15 months back here and it's a great place to be here and uh, you know, contribute in the educational program and the research. Primarily I work on aerosols and air pollution, um, air quality assessment and environmental health assessment. So how air pollution and air quality affects uh, the human health especially. Uh, but here I have also interest in uh, water related issues because as you will also see that there is not much difference between water and air, it's just a matter of density which is different in these cases. So basically there are four uh, sub themes which I thought I will uh, basically construct in case of water pollution. Um, so basically when we talk about water pollution, it is actually water pollution in terms of the characterization. How do we say what is polluted? So as we all know, uh, it is the amount of a substance when it exceed, exceeds in, in, a, uh, in a level which is then basically um, affect the human health or any, uh, the performance of any system, then basically it is considered as a contaminant or pollutant. So in that respect, we are talking about water pollution and then basically what are the ways that we can handle it. So first of all characterization, which means that what are the different parameters that needs to be monitored or measured or modeled so that we can say whether the water is polluted or not. And then like uh, especially um, I thought that the idea would be that if we can enable the students or some of those who will basically become regulators or teachers later, if some sample come to them or some water body sample come to them, which parameters they would like to basically assess so that they can say that okay this is a polluted water and these are the problems with it and so what we need to do about it. So that is the first thing. Of course there we talk about uh, dissolved solids or suspended solids and then different trace contaminants. There are regulations so in this also in the first module basically uh, I uh, basically thought of introducing also regulations. I think partly one of my colleagues have already introduced maybe water quality regulations to you. Uh, but basically in terms of drinking water quality, what are the standards? For example, from CPCB, which is mandated and enforced through the state pollution control boards. Uh, at the same time, around the world, how basically the regulations are uh, being enforced and monitored. For example, um, Disinfection, which all of you know, is one of the primary method for uh, which needs to be done before the drinking water is basically distributed. Now, in India, we have only regulation in terms of some basic bulk parameters like BOD, COD, TDS, pH, temperature, some of those. But for example, in many of the high income countries, for example, North America, Europe or so, they are talking about emerging contaminants. 
meaning like for example pharmaceutical drugs or for example uh, not only this drugs but also their byproducts which are basically ending up into our surface water bodies eventually to ground water bodies and eventually to drinking water so there are more than 150 or so chemicals for which uh, uh, US EPA which is the statutory body which regulates the levels they have basically uh, introduced uh, regulations for that at the same time it is it has also come from the very fact that when the chlorination is done because of the natural organic matter which is present in the water there is a lot of byproduct formation for example trihaloacetic acids or uh, other chlor chlorinated brominated compounds which are suspect carcinogens and which are also regulated so idea is to sensitize the students to not only say that okay these are the parameters which are basically uh, monitored or regulated but at the same time giving them a sense of that these are the ones which are conventionally regulated but the new ones the emerging ones are coming in and we need to have a good assessment of that as well there I would like to also mention one last thing which is also related with other thing I said about health effects so there are two kind of health responses one is acute another is chronic so for example you may all of you may remember or may have read about the London cholera episode so where basically thousands of people got diarrhea and it was found out that it was because of the cross contamination of a sewage pipe which was broken and it was basically one of the street called Broad Street which was basically contaminated with the coliforms or sewage now what they identified is basically most of the proliferation of the disease outbreak was around that pump and in London now they have this broad street and uh, John Snow who was the person who basically identified and at that point cholera was supposed to be basically proliferated using the by the air not by the waterborne you know pathogens so uh, the acute responses are like diarrhea but then for example what we call now endocrine disrupting chemicals EDCs these are the ones which basically affect for example neurological development birth related disorders pregnancy related problems low birth weight stunting as we call it. so some of those things happen because of the slow and very small doses of some of these emerging contaminants now does this need to be told I think yes it needs to be told and that's why so it will be a mixture of the, the conventional pollutant as well as some of these emerging contaminants that is the first module the second thing uh, I would like to mention is that all of you may have heard about wastewater treatment already in 2013 the World Water Federation basically started calling it water resources recovery facility instead of wastewater treatment because it is eventual that at one point we have to reclaim the water from the wastewater for drinking purpose so already we have less than 0.01% of the total water body available as drinking water and the total population load is increasing so eventually we will have to basically resort to that so in that module basically we will talk about how the wastewater is collected we will talk about the storm water collection whether they should be separate or they should be together with the with the municipal wastewater and then what are the treatment methods and the last module will be about the drinking water treatment and which is basically that even before wastewater reclamation first thing we need to basically give everyone is drinking water so that drinking water basically goes through series of water treatment uh, process as well as especially disinfection and uh, filtration I think more or less most of you are probably using at home some kind of advanced uh, you know treatment system either UV or RO or something while we all are so much concerned about our you know the water that we are drinking we are at a stage where basically still it is not the right quality of water available but just availability of drinking water is a huge concern so in that context we will also talk about for example what are different sources of drinking water which is surface water groundwater and then for example reclaimed water desalinated water some of those 
what other technologies available to do that and then eventually disinfection and then some of the emerging methods for example i mentioned about chlorination is the widely used method which is used for disinfection already in 1906 uh, in new jersey the first whole like community wide scale uh, disinfected water treatment system was established and it was basically aftermath of the london cholera uh, episode and now actually in most part of the world this is basically being done but then there are other methods for example advanced oxidation uv ozonation and some of these methods which have of course some of the cost sides which of course need to be also dealt in in summary in the end we would like to basically make a case that if we look closely we can find out anything and we can say that it is a contaminant at the same time if we spend enough resources we can basically decontaminate and clean the water but is it worth and what needs to be done where the energy and the resources need to be focused in so that is probably one of the outcomes that will be of this module so these are the basically uh, three or the four modules which I will basically cover in this section and now I think because uh, you may have already like a lot of experience in this so maybe we open this platform for this forum for everyone and if you can tell for example you can be as specific as like okay whether this parameter needs to be looked at or not or versus whether some advancement which are happening in terms of treatment whether a secondary treatment or for example advanced oxidation or some of those they need to be covered so if you feel like that is what basically needs to be uh, you know imparted to the coming generation then maybe we need to focus it there but if it, at the same time we need to keep the generic nature of this course meaning that they should get a broad understanding of all the different factors and so that's where I basically stop there are videos which are nice uh, you know uh, even uh, like uh, I mean real time videos as well as animated videos which are basically you know kind of very clearly can show how for example from how wastewater is generated and eventually how basically it is clean and then get disposed to whether surface water bodies or sea water or different things so some of these videos about seven to eight minutes two or three videos will be part of this where they will then get some time to digest that material and then there will be some calculations on for example how some of the parameters are assessed and some chemistry on that so it will be like some kind of review session after each of the module and then basically they will just get an understanding of what has been covered and if they can at least get 60 70 percent of that i think our our job will be done. So can we can we add something pollution yeah. at the source level like groundwater surface water river because uh, there are a lot of questions being asked actually if you look at the UGC NET exam, CSIR. So there are a lot of question comes on that. So Source you mean like the characterization of the groundwater and the surface water, so how they are different in terms of the water quality? Is that what you? Pollution at groundwater level, surface water, river water pollution. Okay, fine, yeah. So basically, let's say a vertical profile of some of the pollutants in surface water bodies or even in groundwater, yeah, definitely. I have a suggestion. Um, we have this uh, writing board yes, there, right? Yes, yes. So if you can just display that, and what I'll then request is, you know, one section at a time, I'll go up, and I'll have you raise your hand, and say, what is it that you, either what you teach, or what is it that you'd like to actually learn, so that your, so for me, for example, to teach ecology, I would require a lot of reading myself to gain the confidence to teach ecology because I don't, I don't typically teach ecology, okay? So how many of you have an area, a background in the area of water and wastewater? Okay, how many of you do not? Okay, so the people who have a background in that area have a particular kind of questions and the people who do not have background in that area have still have questions but of a different kind, okay? So I want to be able to capture the entire spectrum of the questions such that because, you know, each one of you will then be dealing with 30 to 50 people at your centers, uh, you will deal with these, this kind of spectrum, okay? Not that you're expected to answer all of them, but I want to be prepared so that when I finally walk into the class to teach my students, I at least am aware of the questions even if I don't have answers to it, okay? All right, and not just the awareness of the questions, uh, what Harish and I will then do is uh, 
connect the resources for these questions so that they can be answered. Fair enough? So as we know, we have a point source and non-point source for the different type of pollutions in terms of water. So in which uh, the non-point source contribute near about 75%. And 25% is contributed by this point source. But still we are uh, treating uh, for this point source. So is it fair uh, for such kind of treatment and uh, their disposal into the uh, natural water bodies which is available with us? And uh, the second thing uh, regarding the non-point source. So how we can treat such kind of non-point sources and uh, it will uh, reduce their impact on the natural water bodies? Definitely. So I, I think, so I will just write it basically uh, point versus non-point. And you are talking about natural drinking water, right? So I think, uh, um, well, I don't have all the answers for that, but basically one of the things that we have to always do is prevention. Because the non-point sources are the ones which we cannot actually implement at each of those non-points, the kind of interventions. So what at least what we can do is can move them away from those points where they can actually, you know, can, can get to some of these water bodies. For example, in Mumbai, basically we have these six, seven lakes. And Bihar Lake, Tulsi Lake, these are the two which are providing most of the drinking water to the most of the uh, city or the urban uh, metropolitan area. Now these have actually, uh, are well actually protected compared to for example Pavai Lake. Pavai. Right? So now because the Pavai Lake is not providing any uh, you know, drinking water source, so the emphasis in terms of the protection is not that much high. But of course at one point the concern was to basically uh, make it recreational level. So there, there your point is very valid that basically how can we, first we have to identify non-point sources and then basically we can work around that. Sir, is there any method to identify such kind of non-point source? Because in terms of rural area, we have a 99% area which is covered under this agriculture practices. Yes. So is there any method to trap such kind of the uh, NPS, that is non-point sources which are coming from this uh, natural that agricultural as well as the open depiction which is mostly practiced in this uh, rural area. So can we identify such kind of NPS and uh, we can divert these points so that it will control on the pollution? Yeah, so basically what you are saying is it's about uh, like source attribution, right? So which, which are the different sources and how much they are contributing? So eventually it has to be done through a kind of a mass balance thing. So I am not, I haven't done that work myself yet, but I think it is, it is possible. For example, one of the projects that we have, we are basically working on is uh, together with Professor Sethi and there are three other faculty in the CEC, is about uh, restoring, at least the intention is to restore the quality of water of the Ulhas, Waldoni uh, River, Nala Creek system. And one of the first thing we need to really estimate there is what are the different sources of pollutants and how much they are contributing. Because it includes not only uh, some of the industrial effluents which are going to these nala or these things, but at the same time the municipal wastewater which is sometimes going untreated. So there's where... So, so last question. So uh, in terms of the any confined area, if we consider one watershed area for one single river basin, so in that case, can we go for a decentralized treatment system or for a regional treatment system? Because if we see that the whatever waste which we are going to treat with the help of this decentralized treatment system, but still it is uh, under pollution and uh, it is ultimately uh, getting mixed into natural resources and uh, it is not giving us that much lower impact of the uh, pollutants. Still it is giving us the uh, pollution of such kind of things. So can we go for a decentralized or for a regional treatment? So I am not actually in a position right now to answer that question, but I think partly the answer should be in the costs as well. Because I mean, it is as we always know, it is always easier in terms of regulation, in terms of enforcement to go for a more centralized treatment. But at the same time, then it is about like, for example, some of the biomedical facilities, some of the big restaurants, they are having decentralized treatment at their facility itself. Some of the smaller scale industries, they are having at least some primary treatment. So that is actually being mandated. Now, whether that could be basically taken to like community level and uh, how much feasible it would be, I, I cannot 
answer that type. Actually, I don't have a questions, rather a kind of my view on what sir has just recently asked. So the best way to tackle the non-point source pollution is basically watershed management. The way we can manage or control the non-point source is basically through watershed management only. Okay. Yes. Sure. Definitely. So yeah, basically you are taking it as a system whole and then basically identify what are the because different sources. Non-point source is generated through a runoff. Yes. So if we characterize that runoff and what amount of pollutant or nutrient is coming along that runoff, then we can uh, provide a solution for the same. Then you have to tackle it separately. Means groundwater systems and surface uh, uh, water system is entirely different. Though they have connections, but you have to tackle it uh, in different entity. The movement is again very slow. The groundwater movement is extremely slow. Say a few meters in hundreds of years or like that. Yes. Sir. Extremely slow. As compared to surface runoff, the movement of groundwater is, you can say, extremely negligible. Of course, we don't want to get into a kind of dual here, but basically, it is also dependent on the season part. So basically, when you have a high precipitation, of course, the surface runoff is far, far more high, and then it becomes more of a, you know imminent issue which can be tackled compared to, for example, if you are talking about summer or so, when actually there is no movement, because there is no actually water in some of these, you know, uh, like nalas or so, which are basically eventually going to some of the water bodies. So in terms of the module, basically, uh, I already mentioned like what this water pollution module will have. So I don't have anything additional to mention here, except, so in that sense, this will be what it will comprise of. So this session right now is basically, for example, for me and also for all of you. So like what are the other things or additional things that we need to focus on, which should be part of the content. So that's why we are interacting here. Please go yes. ahead. Uh, when we treat water, uh, basically we reclaim water and we use it and again we throw it and we uh, treat it again and re reclaim water. So uh, how does it affect the environment? I mean, is it a... Uh, the water that we are getting after repeated reclamation, is it uh, environment friendly or not? You mean reclaimed water from where? I mean... You mean like after right. the wastewater and it's treated? Right, That's and we it? throw it again, we use it and it th throw it again, so it's like a circle going on. Right. 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 So... Yes. Okay. According to my understanding, what uh, Harish sir was asking that, what will thing we had to add regarding the this particular session. Yeah. So the uh, one thing I have had to ask you that when we are dealing about uh, water recovery, it will be nice if you are including the latest trends in uh, water recovery. If it's not there, it will be very nice because it's one of the things students are very much interested about. Okay. So again, more like a solution to an issue, etc. And then no, what sir, people not can like engaged? solution. What are the latest trends? Like uh, trends in the trends in what? And uh, purification, how do we reuse it? So after reuse, how does uh, it is being Excellent. disposed all right. of all those things? Very good, got it. Okay, thank you. Next person here. Uh, actually, you were talking about different uh, pharmaceutical compounds. Uh, in that respect, uh, I would like to just, uh, if, if we can incorporate the ill effects on environment, particularly ecosystem, how resistant gene is developed, then how they affect the environment as well as human health, that part will be more interesting now, since day by day the consumption of antibiotics particularly excellent, excellent. in India, it is yeah. increased. So a part that of part the, maybe we should have a conversation also. We, we What we will do is we will take a look at, yeah. so maybe we'll ask Maya to also yes. look to see, you know, in the larger scheme of overall, we will cover, we will include it somewhere. Okay. May not be in water, but we'll include it somewhere. Okay, okay. What's your next thing? Uh, actually, when we are talking about uh, traditional drinking water treatment in that uh, if we can incorporate some all of us in our houses we use some filters or advanced purifiers mm -hmm. how they work why we use them if we can explain that along with the conventional treatment that will be more interesting. excellent excellent because uh, it's something which is of direct yeah, yeah. Uh, immediate they are experience, using right? In their houses, yeah. uh, how how it is working. Excellent. If that can, uh, yeah, it's that a very good. It's a very good way of actually reaching out to people immediately. Good, good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, last person. Waste load allocation. So now, yeah, because these people are working with a lot of uh, uh, river uh, uh, reaction plants or what, and now we have to think about uh, the river water pollution in the sense of load allocations. Can you say something about waste load allocations in the rivers? Because as people have pointed out this point and non-point. 
So now you have to work on, uh, you to maintain a certain water quality in the rivers, you have to work back. So can you say something about uh, what are the waste load allocation in the rivers? Allocation. So is it load waste allocation. load allocation? Yeah, WLA. Is it something like apportionment as to how much is coming from where? No, no. Huh? Now would, no, no. Uh -huh. Normally in the river, you have to maintain some certain, certain water quality parameters. Yes, yes. The river has already been contaminated now. Yes. So I had to work back now. Yes. So to maintain certain quality of water okay. quality, yes. then I had to restrict off my industries and also the... Excellent. Uh, so yeah, that you okay. can go for a back. So in some way, uh, let me say it's like carrying capacity or... Carrying capacity. It's a direct way. Direct Self way. Self-irrigation. No, indirect way of calculation. Do you see my struggle here? <laughs> yeah, okay, re okay. Related okay. with self-irrigation. Load allocation. Okay, got it. Okay, good. Last person. Sir, in later on our 10 days workshop, so you have to just focus on mainly the treatments, okay, and mainly in domestic and industrial treatments. So these are very important things. And my question is there personally. So what are the... Uh, here in CATP, uh, common effluent treatment plants, okay, in last treatment plant, RO system, if uh, reject is the problem, so what are the solutions for that? Okay, good, thank you. Last person there. As per CPCV norms, zero waste management, it, has, it should be achieved by each and every industrial effluent. So, as per, uh, if uh, zero waste management, it has been banded by the industry, but still there is a pollution which has been created by that particular industries. Then what about the pollution created by that industries? It has been not taken care by the industrialist. So inquire into, the inquiry into a zero waste. Okay. You know, the whole question over there. Okay. Sir, my concern is, uh, in our institute, due to, to reduce the groundwater use, we do recycling for plantation purpose. What is the minimum uh, parameter requirement? to maintain so that uh, the cost is will be less and we can recycle, we can e reuse the water. Okay. So, yeah. Minimum parameter what is required. Okay. And okay. chlorination is required or not for plantation purpose. Okay. Got that it. I yeah. want to know. Sure. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, sir, if you include the role of environmental auditors mm -hmm. uh, for pollution control. <laughs> That's good. May, he may not there. be able to do it, but I think you should make a point, Harish, and we should uh, have somebody. Actually. So there are two other lectures that we're looking at, which are not included right now. One is on environmental law and policy. That's one. And the other is on nuclear safety. So it'll be a one and a half hour session some point in time, right? Okay. So auditors, the relationship with auditors, etc., etc. Okay. Scales are the toughest uh, things to eliminate from water, but apart from the preventive measures such as calgon, carbonate and phosphate conditionings, are there any advanced methods to prevent the scales? Okay, very good. Last, okay. Yes. Some introduction about the quality modeling, water quality modeling. Water quality uh, modeling. Water quality Got it. and uh, groundwater pollution migration. Got it. I, all, it comes, everything comes. As it is the water pollution, I want to add this one. Uh, uh, Go ahead. Say heavy it. metal toxicity and remediation. Okay, heavy metal toxicity and remediation. Okay. Sir, eutrophication can we add? Eutrophication. That's a starting point of it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. See you soon.